Good morning, all. Welcome to Blessed Sacrament. Uh, please rise and join us in singing number 573 to Jesus Christ, our Sovereign King. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. As we prepare ourselves to celebrate these sacred mysteries, we call to mind our sins and ask for God's pardon. Lord Jesus, you are with us until the end of time. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord Jesus, your presence fills the universe. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you guide us home with you into bright glory. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Glory to God, glory to God, glory to God in the highest.
Let us pray. Gladden us with holy joys, almighty God, and make us rejoice with devout thanksgiving for the ascension of Christ your Son is our exaltation. And where the head has gone before in glory, the body is called to follow in hope. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God, forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the Acts of the Apostles. In the first book, Theophilus, I dealt with all that Jesus did and taught until the day he was taken up, after giving instructions through the Holy Spirit to the apostles whom he had chosen. He presented himself alive to them by many proofs after he had suffered, appearing to them during 40 days and speaking about the kingdom of God. While meeting with them, he enjoined them not to depart from Jerusalem, but to wait for the promise of the Father about which you have heard me speak. For John baptized with water, but in a few days you will be baptized with the Holy Spirit. When they had gathered together, they asked him, Lord, are you at this time going to restore the kingdom to Israel? He answered them, It is not for you to know the times or seasons that the Father has established by his own authority, but you will receive power when the Holy Spirit comes upon you, and you will be my witnesses in Jerusalem, throughout Judea and Samaria, and to the ends of the earth. When he had said this, as they were looking on, he was lifted up and a cloud took him from their sight. While they were looking intently at the sky as he was going, suddenly two men dressed in white garments stood beside them. They said, men of Galilee, why are you standing there looking at the sky? This Jesus who has been taken up from you into heaven will return in the same way as you have seen him going into heaven. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God.
A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Ephesians. Brothers and sisters, may the God of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of glory, give you a spirit of wisdom and revelation, resulting in knowledge of him. May the eyes of your hearts be enlightened, that you may know what is the hope that belongs to his call, what are the riches of glory in his inheritance among the holy ones, and what is the surpassing greatness of his power for us who believe, in accord with the exercise of his great might, which he worked in Christ, raising him from the dead and seating him at his right hand in the heavens, far above every principality, authority, power, and dominion, and every name that is named, not only in this age, but also in the one to come. And he put all things beneath his feet and gave him as head over all things to the church, which is his body, the fullness of the one who fills all things in every way. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Lord be with you. Reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. Jesus said to his disciples, Thus it is written that the Christ would suffer and rise from the dead on the third day, and that repentance for the forgiveness of sins would be preached in his name to all nations beginning from Jerusalem. You are witnesses of these things. And behold, I am sending the promise of my Father upon you. But stay in the city until you are clothed from power from on high. Then he led them out as far as Bethany, raised his hands, and blessed them. As he blessed them, he parted from them and was taken up to heaven. They did him homage. And then returning to, returned to Jerusalem with great joy. And they were continually in the temple praising God. The Gospel of the Lord. today's gospel from the gospel of Luke, which is a story of the ascension, we are told the disciples are joyful. They return to Jerusalem joyful that Jesus has ascended. And we might wonder why. If we were to take the place of the disciples, we could see how they might not be so joyful. This mysterious miracle working rabbi is leaving them after having appeared to them unexpectedly after his brutal crucifixion. We can imagine their thoughts. Since you're with us again, why leave? What's the rush? Where are you going anyway? And this past week, we've had these readings, the readings where Jesus is explaining why he has to go. They might especially be sad if they had the foreknowledge of what their fates would be. You will be boiled in oil. You will be crucified upside down. You will have your skin ripped off. You will have spears go through you. You will be stabbed by swords. You will be burned. You will be bludgeoned by clubs. You will be whipped to then have your head cut off. And uh, you will die of old age. So we may wonder why Jesus has been telling us in the readings for the last week why it's good for him to go to the Father. 
Monsignor Mannion in the Intermountain Catholic, recently in an article, explained why. He said, it's not Jesus, just Jesus who ascends, but it's the whole church that ascends with him. We are the body of Christ. Additionally, uh, Monsignor Mannion refers, Monsignor Mannion, by the way, is the pastor emeritus of St. Vincent's, um, and also he has his doctorate in sacramental theology. Um, but uh, he said that it, when we start the Eucharistic prayer, when the priest starts it off, we, when we say, we lift up our hearts, we lift them up to the Lord. So we raise our hearts, we raise our minds, our praise to God. Um, it seems that this is one thing that we meditate on, whether it's Easter, the Ascension, Christmas, or any Christ-centered celebration that we have. And that is the miracle and mystery of the Incarnation. It isn't that God is powerful or even Jesus is divine. We get that. We understand that well. It is that humanity and divinity are united in Jesus. Our humanity is linked with divinity or God shares the fullness of his life with us through his Son and the Holy Spirit. We have little difficulty seeing that God is other and powerful. What we have difficult under, difficulty understanding is that we are divine in the sense that Christ has divinized our humanity by sharing himself with us. As we say often, why is there evil in the world? Why is my life so hard? Why am I depressed, sad, lonely, powerless? Why do some people do really evil things? God has shared his life with us. So we are given the mission to do something. And many people have done great things, as well as horrible and evil things, as we know. We are sinful. I don't have to tell you this. There was a terrible mass shooting in Texas just a couple days ago where 21 people lost their lives. It was pointless. But we, we can't forget that this is not an uncommon occurrence. We average at least one mass shooting every day in the United States. We have already had 213 mass shootings this year. Many of us thankfully live in peaceful communities, like here in Sandy, Utah. And we live in a much more peaceful world compared to the past history of humanity. We know that. It's better to live in this century than in previous ones. However, we have this too common daily occurrence of people losing their lives by gun violence someplace in our nation. And we have no idea where the next um, incident is going to happen, where the next set of news trucks will gather to tell their awful story. But every day they go somewhere else, and the more tragic the story, the more we hear about it. For the last week, we've been hearing reasons why this occurs from guns to breakdown in our society and family structures to untreated mental illness. If we look at this theologically, we could say we struggle to acknowledge the divinity within ourselves and in all people. If we were mystics, we could see God in each person we met, whether they were our friend or our enemy. We would see God's light in their eyes. We'd realize that if we kill anyone, we're not just killing another person, but also part of God. So if we woke up saying and thinking, I am God and you are God, we are God in the sense that God, the Trinity, has shared himself with us and then so that we might live, we might live in a different way. We might live in such a way that honored the God-given dignity of each human being. Although God has shared his life with us, it seems our default is to sin. All of our relationships are touched with sin. It is the grace of God that keeps us together. It seems we need to pray for our nation that we may work to bring more people together. However, our words or our thoughts and prayers are futile if they're not backed up with actions that would bring us together so that we can see God's light in the eyes of others. I was listening to a show on NPR this last week, and the people who were speaking were millennials. They said something profound, 
and I don't think they even realized what they said. When I was listening to it, I was like, what? What did they say again? What did they? They said, everything now is more difficult because we no longer have the structures in our society to help us when something bad happens. We are all on our own. So I said this, and I was like, oh, wow, that's a good, good insight. For them, it must feel this way, since so many have left their communities of faith or have never joined. So many children are, brought up, are not brought up in any community of faith. Maybe they watch an old movie where people attend a church, and they wonder just what that is, what it would be to attend a church regu regularly, to have a church community, to devote time to God. Maybe they think that this is just something their grandparents or great-grandparents might have done. How odd, how strange. Our church communities are the last structures left where one can come to worship God. It is the one activity one may have during the week that is not based upon consumerism, work, recreation, or, nor trying to get ahead. You're not paying to be entertained. You're not paying for a service. You're not working off that pork chop you ate last night at the gym. You and I are here to worship God, and we are here with each other. We are not here to try to sell you anything, take advantage of another person, nor get anything in particular. We are here for the right reasons, to pray together and to just to be with other Christians. Our churches may be the last institutions where we can get together to worship God and to be with others in community. Before there were Gospels, there was the Christian community. So before Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John were written, there was the Christian community. The word was Jesus himself, and the community spread his word. The community was the body of Christ and continued with his mission. So God wishes to bring all people together. That is his vision. The first followers of Christ were able to offer all they had for the community of faith. We are asked to continue with their mission as we reflect today on how Christ ascended, how they rejoiced, and how we continue as his body on this earth. We now stand, we profess our faith. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten not made, consubstantial with the Father, through him all things were made, for us men and for our salvation. He came down from heaven, and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate the Virgin Mary, and became man. For our sake, who was crucified under Pontius Pilate, he suffered death and was buried, and rose again on the third day, in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven, and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead, the life of the world to come. Amen. Christ has ascended to heaven to sit at the right hand of the Father. Let us ask him to intercede for us as we offer our needs and the needs of our sisters and brothers. For all Christians, that we may spread the good news in places near and far as we witness to the wonders the Lord has done in our lives and the lives of those we love. We pray to the Lord. 
that leaders of all nations may permit their citizens to freely practice their faith, and that all people may be free from fear of persecution. We pray to the Lord. For an enduring love for all human life, from womb to the end of natural life, so that all people may refrain from the deliberate taking of any human life, we pray to the Lord. For missionaries who have taken to heart Jesus' directive to make disciples of all nations, that they may find fertile ground for our faith while respecting the cultures they encounter, we pray to the Lord. Heavenly God, you called your Son to be with you and sent the Spirit to stay with us. Help us find strength in the Holy Spirit as we witness to your Son in the lives we lead. Grant this in all our prayers through your Son, our risen and ascended Lord. Amen. Please have a seat as we prepare the altar. During preparation of the gifts, please join us in singing number 683. Across the barren desert, but you shall not die of thirst. You shall wander far in safety, though you do not know the way. You shall speak your word. for this morning's Mass is for our parish community and for Margie Bo Margie Boyle and the intentions of Larry and Julie Montoya. Pray, sisters and brothers, that your sacrifice and mine may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. We offer, we offer sacrifice now in supplication, O Lord, to honor the wondrous ascension of your Son. Grant, we pray, that through this most holy exchange, we too may rise up to the heavenly realms, through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It's truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father. Almighty and eternal God. For the Lord Jesus, the King of glory, conqueror of sin and death, ascended today to the highest heavens as the angels gazed in wonder. 
mediator between God and man, judge of the world and Lord of hosts. He ascended not to distance himself from our lowly state, but that we, his members, might be confident of following where he, our head and founder, has gone before. Therefore, overcome with paschal joy, every land, every people, exult in your praise, and even the heavenly powers with the angelic hosts sing together the unending hymn of your glory as they acclaim. Therefore, most merciful Father, we make humble prayer and petition through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, that you accept and bless these gifts, these offerings, these holy and unblemished sacrifices, which we offer you firstly for your holy Catholic Church. Be pleased to grant her peace, to guard, unite, and govern her throughout the whole world, together with your servant, Francis, our Pope, and Oscar, our Bishop, and all those holding to the truth, hand on the Catholic and apostolic faith. Remember, Lord, your servants and all gathered here, whose faith and devotion are known to you. For them we offer you this sacrifice of praise, or they offer it for themselves and all who are dear to them, for the redemption of their souls, in the hope of health and well-being, and paying their homage to you, the eternal God, living and true. Celebrating that most sacred day on which your only begotten Son, our Lord, placed at the right hand of your glory our weak human nature, which he had united to himself, and in communion with those whose memory we venerate, especially the glorious ever-Virgin Mary, mother of our God and Lord Jesus Christ, and blessed Joseph, her spouse, your blessed apostles and martyrs, Peter and Paul, Andrew, and all your saints. We ask that through their merits and prayers in all things we may be defended by your protecting help. Therefore, Lord, we pray, Graciously accept this oblation of our service, that of your whole family. Order our days in your peace, and command that we be delivered from eternal damnation, and counted among the flock of those you have chosen. Be pleased, O God, we pray, to bless, acknowledge, and approve this offering in every respect. Make it spiritual and acceptable, so it may become for us the body and blood of your most beloved Son, our Lord Jesus Christ. On the day before he was to suffer, he took bread in his holy and venerable hands, with eyes raised to heaven, to you, O God, his almighty Father. Giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took this precious chalice in his holy and venerable hands, and once more giving you thanks, he said the blessing, and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. When we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim your death, O Lord, until. Therefore, Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the Blessed Passion, the resurrection from the dead, and the glorious ascension into heaven of Christ, your Son, our Lord, we, your servants and your holy people, offer to your glorious majesty 
from the gifts you have given us, this pure victim, this holy victim, this spotless victim, the holy bread of eternal life, and the chalice of everlasting salvation. Be pleased to look upon these offerings with a serene and kindly countenance, and to accept them as once you were pleased to accept the gifts of your servant, Abel the Just, the sacrifice of Abraham, our father in faith, and the offering of your high priest, Melchizedek, a holy sacrifice, a spotless victim. In humble prayer, we ask you, Almighty God, to command that these gifts be borne by the hands of your holy angel to your altar on high, in the sight of your divine majesty, so that all of us who through this participation at the altar receive the most holy body and blood of your Son, may be filled with every grace and heavenly blessing. Remember also, Lord, your servants who have gone before us with a sign of faith and rest in the sleep of peace. Grant them, O Lord, we pray, and all who sleep in Christ, a place of refreshment, light, and peace. To us also, your servants, who those sinners hope in your abundant mercies, graciously grant some share and fellowship with your holy apostles and martyrs, with John the Baptist, Stephen, Matthias, Barnabas, and all your saints. Admit us, we beseech you, into their company, not weighing our merits, but granting us your pardon, through Christ our Lord. Through whom you continue to make all these good things, O Lord, you sanctify them, fill them with life, bless them, and bestow them upon us. Who him and with him and in him O God Almighty, Father, in unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. The Savior's command, informed by divine teaching, we dare to say. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress. As we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ, for the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Peace of the Lord be to all. Offer to the sign of peace.
Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you stand under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed.
Let us pray. <clears throat> Almighty, ever-living God, who allow us on earth to celebrate divine mysteries, grant, we pray, that Christian hope may draw us onward to where our nature is united with you, through Christ our Lord. Amen. Okay, a few announcements. Uh, the second collection today is for the Catholic Communications Campaign. If you'd like to give to the second collection, there are envelopes in the back. Also, um, the Council of, Catholic Women, Catholic Council of Catholic Women annual garage sale is coming up June 10th and 11th, so in a couple weeks, Friday and Saturday. Um, they have tables back there. The ladies still need lots of donations of volunteers to make it happen. If you'd like to have any questions or like to talk to them about it or volunteer, then please talk to the ladies in the back in the vestibule um, to, to um, figure out what, how you could help or be part of that if you'd like. Um, also, the youth group will be having a bake sale fundraiser um, there at uh, the garage sale. And they need uh, many baked goods to sell, so please visit the CCW sign-up table um, and sign up to bring some, some baked goods. All right. Um, and this Friday is First Friday, uh, so there'll be the Council of Catholic Women We'll have adoration from 6 to 7 in the evening. Um, so all are welcome to join in adoration prayer. And let's see. And we're planning our 50th anniversary celebration, which is the week after the garage sale. We have lots going on in the month of June. Um, so that's Saturday. We'll have the 5 o'clock mass. The bishop will come. And then we'll have a reception over in our parish hall. Um, we have caterers coming, so please RSVP if you're planning on coming. Please do come, but RSVP, let us know if you're coming so we can be prepared. And that's it. Oh, and um, I'm leaving for Kanab tomorrow uh, with uh, Father Martin. Um, so we will, uh, I'll be back, we'll be back on Thursday, Thursday. Um, so there will be no Mass here Tuesday, Wednesday, or Thursday but there will be Mass on Friday. So if you'd like to go to daily Mass, uh, join one of our neighboring parishes, meet some new folks. So just put that on your calendar. But the office will be open. Julia will be here. So if you need anything, feel free to stop by or make a phone call. The Lord be with you. May Almighty God bless you, for on this very day his only begotten Son pierced the heights of heaven and unlocked for you the way to ascend to where he is. May he grant that as Christ after his resurrection was seen plainly by his disciples, so when he comes as judge, he may show you himself merciful to you for all eternity. Amen. And may you who believe he is seated with the Father in his majesty Know with joy the fulfillment of his promise to stay with you until the end of time. Amen. May the blessing of Almighty God, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit come down on you and remain with you forever. Amen. Go in peace. Amen. And we have uh, coffee and donuts over in the hall after Mass, so don't be a stranger. Over in our hall, coffee and donuts. Please join us in singing number 574.